Hi and welcome to Peacemeg TV. In today's tutorial for Lightroom, I'm going to give you five tips to improve your use of working with the adjustment brush. So let's take a look at those five tips right now. So the first tip is broken down into a couple of component parts and this is where we can look at changing the brush size, resetting and settings and fixing any mistakes in the editing and working with the brush that we may make. So let's just select the adjustment brush. And if we take a look at the brush pointer you can see that we've got the circle that denotes the size of the brush. If we use the mouse scroll wheel up and down we'll change the size of that brush accordingly. So we can quickly and easily increase or decrease the size of the brush that we're working with simply by using the mouse wheel. The next part is when you've gone through and you've made a load of edits or you called up a custom preset and you want to reset everything, if you simply hold the Alt key down on your keyboard, you'll see that the effect icon will change to reset. We can click that and that'll reset everything back to the default value. So you can see it zeroes everything and resets the brush size back to its default setting. So that's just using the Alt key on your keyboard. That'll change it over to Reset and simply click on Reset to reset everything on there. But there's an even quicker way. So let's just adjust some of these settings. Instead of holding that Alt key down on the keyboard, we can simply just double click where it says Effect and that'll do exactly the same. So we don't need to hold the Alt key down, but you've got both options available to you. Now the next option we've got is, let's just say we're working on making some edits to a picture. And we're using the adjustment brush and we press O on the keyboard to show us exactly what's being masked. Let's just say, for example, we've made a mistake. Well, there's no real way of doing it other than coming down to the erase and switching over to the eraser tool. Again, if we hold the Alt key down on the keyboard, you can see we now change from the plus to the minus and that allows us to start erasing. As long as you've got the Alt key held down on the keyboard, we can adjust the brush size, the feather, the flow or any other parameter for that and that will adjust only the erase version. Once we let go and switch back to the normal version, you can see that's reset itself back to the default values that we set originally. So Alt, that'll switch it over to the erase tool. Letting go of the Alt will switch it back to the normal mask tool. Quick and easy. So the next tip we have available to us is taking advantage of the A and B brush. So what does that do? Well, if we take a look at the brush options, you can see we have A and B brushes. And what we can do with this is we can set up two completely different brushes and quickly swap between the two of them. So we can set one up for very, very small edits where we've got a very small brush with a large soft uh, feather on the edge. Then we can switch over to the B and we could set a brush up that's considerably bigger to work with very, very large edits. And then we can simply use the forward slash key on the keyboard to switch between the two. Or alternatively, we can just use the A and B on the brush panel itself to do exactly the same job. So a great way of having two brushes set up to do completely different work and then quickly swapping back and forth by using a simple keyboard shortcut or by using the buttons on the toolbox itself. So tip number three, brush presets. If we come over to the toolbox with the adjustment brush selected, you can see we've got a set of predefined effects for things like adjusting the temperature, the tint, the exposure, highlights, noise, so we can use the adjustment brush to make these alterations. But we can also create our own. All these adjustment brush presets are, are simply a set of alterations we've made to any of the parameters we have available to us and then saved as a, a basic action for that particular brush. So we can create our own. Let's just say, for example, we wanted to set up a particular effect that we wanted to paint on, where we could set those to whatever we wanted, any of these values, now, I'm not being particularly picky. I just want to show you. You can see it now changes the effect to custom because we've made alterations to it. We can simply come down, choose Save Current Setting as a new preset. We can then give it a name, click Create, and that becomes available to us in the Effects panel whenever we want to use it. So a quick and easy way of setting up your own presets. So tip number four, we can add color to any of the brush effects that we use with the adjustment brush. So we take a look with the color chip, you can see we can click, we can choose any color from the color spectrum. And we can use that in combination with any of the effects we may want to apply to this. So we may say we want to adjust the exposure, 
and we want to give a blue tinge to it. So let's just simply come over, and as you can see, I adjust the exposure and also apply that blue tint to the overall brush effect. So this is a great way if you want to enhance a particular part of your image and you want to influence the color there, you want to increase the color to that, then you can use this alongside the effects or on its own. Now, a final tip when you're working with the adjustment brush is the auto mask tool. Now, what the auto mask tool does is it tries to define the edges based upon where we actually paint on the image itself, and it'll automatically try to mask so it doesn't go over to areas that we don't want to affect. So, for example, let's just say I want to make an adjustment to the singer's face, but I don't want to affect his hair or the microphone or the jacket or anything else. Well, I can simply come over, check the auto mask. And now as long as when I'm painting over the image, I don't take my little center point outside of the area that I want to work with, that I want to select, then that'll try to auto mask it for us. So let me just show you by example. I've got the auto mask selected and I'm just going to simply paint. There's my first part. I'm going to press O on the keyboard so we get the mask so we can see exactly what we're doing with the red overlay. So now as I come over this, as long as I make sure the little plus symbol stays inside the area that I want to affect and doesn't go onto anything that I don't want to select, so for example, the microphone, I can just easily go over my picture. And once I've finished, I can either disable the auto mask, which will just stop trying to mask automatically for me. So it speeds up the entire process of making this selection. And I can switch that on and off as and when I need it to make sure that I'm only selecting what I want and not affecting anything else. So now if I just come over and let's just say, for example, that I take the highlights and reduce those, just press O on the keyboard to get rid of the overlay. So if I take the highlights now and reduce those, you'll see only the face is being affected, the microphone, the hair, and everything else remains completely unaffected because of the auto mask feature that we've had that protects the areas that we don't want to affect and only selects the parts that we do want to select. And that's our five productivity tips when you're working with the adjustment brush inside Lightroom. I hope you found these useful. I hope it's going to make your life working with the adjustment brush just a little bit easier. If you did enjoy the video, please give it a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button to be kept up to date with all of the new content we add on a weekly basis. If any comments, questions or feedback on this video or anything else, please pop those in the comment section below. And if you'd like more information or exclusive content, please pop over to www.lightroomtv.co.uk where there's exclusive content not available anywhere else. Well, until next time, take care.